What are the top 10 Tom Hardy movies? Yes, Bike Riders with Austin Butler and Tom Hardy and Jodie Comer is about to come out. And it's one we've done on the podcast format, but we haven't done since we relaunched the channel. So with all that said, what indeed are the top 10 Tom Hardy movies? Hello, everybody! Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome we got it. back, Matt. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Absolutely we are not alone. Cheers. We are joined by indie podcast royalty, Matt Sells from the Bigger Movie Podcast, the man famous for hello and... <laughs> <laughs> not famous for yeah. Give it time. <laughs> <laughs> and the but man famous listen, for asking listen, very, listen. very, very provocative questions on the Bigger Movie Pod, one of the best podcasts out there that isn't ours. Follow them now. <laughs> yeah, buy some merch as well. <laughs> hey, hey, loving the look, loving the look. Get the plug in. Got to get the plug in. Yeah, the and plug where can in. they purchase that, Matt? Oh, do you know, what? on the website somewhere. Do you know what? I'll do you a solid. I'll put a link to your merch store in our description. There oh, you awesome. go. There's hoodies and tote bags and all that sort of stuff. Actually, I think that's all there is. But yeah, I want tank tops. Tank tops as well. We need to work on that. I think. Hey, that merch is out, and that's a good thing. So you beating us to that punch? I was gonna say <laughs> we're not selling anything yet. These are just for us. <laughs> season seven coming soon. Season seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be discussed. Hook me up, yeah. Come, get, come nah, I'll hook you up. Don't you worry. That's the one, of course. <laughs> Naturally, you hook us up, we hook you up. That's the deal. That's movie the deal. merch. Let's talk movies. Indeed, let's talk movies. Indeed, and not just any sort of movies. Where it's a, it's a highlight. It's a character piece. It's the one, the only. Matt, I'll let you introduce him because it's one of your favorite actors. Tom Bloody Hardy. Yeah, one yeah. of our greats, one of our greats. So it's, it's, it's a pleasure to talk a bit of Tom Hardy, the one actor who I get to be a hipster about. It's a very, very hipster thing to say, like I knew him before he was famous, but I actually did. I I'm not alone in this, obviously. No one knew who the hell Tom Hardy was when Bronson came out. This nope. is just a fact. And I stumbled across Bronson and I went, This guy, he's gonna be huge. Anyone who saw Bronson went, I agree. Anyone who hadn't seen Bronson went, I disagree. I remember seeing it at the cinema. Oof. No, I mean, nor we'll, me. We'll get to it later. I saw I saw it at the cinema when it came out. Oh, did you? Hey, you're more of a yeah, than I, I am. Good for you. I know who <laughs> Bronson you've, been, was, you've been out hipstered. I have. <laughs> Is that cool. a kind of a compliment or not? <laughs> <laughs> It shut him up, so it's a compliment. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any excuse to shut Nico up, AJ? You're on it, aren't you? Oh, oh mate. Uh, just about. Just about. But here Is we this go. how it's going to be tonight? We're tag teaming me already, yeah? All right, cool. No, uh, triple, triple threat. Sorry. Good man. Good man. Good, good man. good man. We're all good. Yeah. Right. That one's for now, <laughs> now, before we do start talking movies, let's tell everybody what the movie Mount Rushmore is all about, Nico. Well, for those of you tuning in for the first time, basically it's a top 10 show between two best friends plus one from school. Um, the show works this way. We get assigned a top 10 list. We go our separate ways. We come right back here into our video recording and deliver to you, the Silver Screen Dudes, our film familiar, our individual top 10s. When it is three people with a guest, this is how it works. The guest, in this case, Monsieur Mathieu. Matthew will go first, delivering his bottom three. We will then deliver our bottom three. Matt will deliver his next two. We will deliver our next two. Then we will trade one apiece. If at any time, while well, we are rounding off our individual top ten list, one person has a movie in a higher position, that person will say, Hunt. Hunt. Punt. And we will punt and talk about that movie when we get to the higher position. Once we have all rounded off our individual top ten list, in this case, AJ and I have combined a top ten off screen, we will combine our two top 10 lists and create the movie Matt Rushmore. These are the four quintessential diverse must-see movies of the genre. And this one's for you, Matt, which this week is... Tom Hardy Films. There we are. Tom Hardy Films. Okay, guys. Is there one? Is there not one? Do I continue? Okay, right. What then goes on after we, the Silver Screen Dudes, plus one, 
combine to make the movie Matt Rushmore, it gets even more challenging because it gets laser focused. Yes, it's on you, the screeners, to crown El Capitan, El Numero Uno, the best of the best of the best, with honours, sir. And in the words of Heart the King of Kings, and in the words of Highlander, in the end, there can be only one. And how do you crown that one? Well, it's pretty simple. You head on over to X, and you go to at movie MT Rushmore, the official X page of the Silver Screen Dudes. At, more importantly, the person we retweet at movie polls for you. The official page of We Love Movies, fronted by good old JT. There you will be able to vote for the films and crown the winner. A couple of shows ago, a couple of weeks ago, our topic was the best Jerry Bruckheimer movies. And our contenders were Con Air, Pirates of the Caribbean, Top Gun Maverick, and Enemy of the State. Right, I'm going to not duck out of it, but have you seen the poll, Matt? Not yet, no. But I can only tell okay, it was going to be number cool. one, surely. Would you like? Would you like to take the guess? Would you like to take the stab as our guest? Have the stab, Matt. Okay. Well, do you go from bottom to top? I can never remember. I'm yeah, afraid for that. Um, yeah. uh, it's not going to be Con Air or Maverick. What's the other? What are the other two? Pirates of the Caribbean and Enemy of the State. Uh, Enemy of the State. Correct. Enemy of the State was bottom with fifteen percent. Then, uh, just a disclaimer. Between the next three, <laughs> only seven percent separates all three of them. Uh, pirates. This is toit. Nope. Oh, Conair. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Bloody so. hell! I yeah. was not expecting that. Nor me. Well, then it's got to be pirates next. It's not going to be. No. What? <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, what? me, bro. <laughs> Maverick Top and gun. pirates. Maverick than Pirates. I disagree with the people on this one. Yeah, I, I, I totally Although agree. Although I love Pirates of the Caribbean. It's yeah, 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 I'm shocked. Me too. I am shocked. Mm. Wow. Don't mess, mess with the captain. One. Don't mess with the captain. Okay, guys. Yeah. Now you know what to do. You head on over to X and you have your vote. And hey, if you disagree, you should have voted. Simple as. <laughs> that's, that's just the way it goes. And this Pirates of the Caribbean is now in that weird territory of um, Keanu Reeves being the best action star of all time. So there you go. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's talk some movies. In at number 10. Matt, yeah, Matt. Matt, what is your Matt number starts. 10? Your number 10. My number 10 is uh, Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises. Cool. Oh, talk. Talk. So, I nearly didn't put this on mm. for something else. So, there would be an honorable mention later on. But for me, so I've disregarded the plot and how he <laughs> dies in it and just based it basically purely on his performance. Because I thought, even with that mask on, I thought he was awesome. Remember mm. the first scene, seeing out in the cinema, was just mind blowing. I thought it was. And then to find out, they said they, they filmed it. It was Nolan, isn't it? He doesn't use as much special effects. It was even better. Yeah. And the, the shape he got himself in as well was just out of this world. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely hated the what they did with him in the sec, like the end half of the film, like third part of it. I was like, that's not Bane. That's that is not what he's about. What at all? Agreed. Um, so yeah, it was very close, but I just couldn't not get past how good he was when he, at the good parts of the film. Makes sense. Yeah, yes. Tom Hardy is very much a man who has grit, who has gritted his teeth and ground out a career of being really good despite having a mask on his face. Because not only in The Dark Knight <laughs> Rises is he good with the mask. This is a fact. Um, uh-huh. Look, the, yeah. In terms of his shape, I actually think there's another movie where he was in better shape than this, but he was definitely huge in this, like larger yeah. than us. The I voice think... didn't bother me. I think people have memed it more than it needs to be memed. It, it was a bit abrasive the first time you see it. But when you watch it back, it's like, it's really not as comical as people make out. No, and as you said, the first two acts, oh, oh, so good. Like with what he was starting to do, and what his meaning behind everything? I was like, yeah, I can get behind. I can get why he's doing this. Mm. And then the first, I was like, what was the point of all that? I, it was just, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, really annoyed me. Really, really annoyed me. But I still yeah. enjoyed it. 
because he was in no, it. No, for sure, for sure. I mean, to be fair, this was honourable territory for us. Um, mm. oh, was it? This, I think what your honourable is, is the one we went for. I'm pretty sure when it comes up, that's what you're going to say. Um, yeah, it... Pretty much agree with everything you guys say. I'm not going to waste time and change it much. Um, for me, the voice, I think it, it was a weird choice. So it's not that it, he, look, put it this way, his performance outdid the voice, if you would. Mm. That, as much as it bugged me, you, it was a new take on Bane that I was really invested in until yeah. we got to a point where it became nonsensical Bane. And that's what yeah. bugged me. Yeah. I completely agree with you there. Completely Just agree. remember. It could have been worse. He could have been walking around going, bomb. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been. Oh, I remember when they first announced that Bane was going to be in this, and oh. I was just like, oh, my God. Last time I saw Bane, the Batman film, I was not impressed. <laughs> nope. nope. I had, I had God, to thank God, God it was going to be completely different, and thank God it was. It really was. I'll yeah. still never forget the comedy of that original one, though. <laughs> Come, Bane, my darling. We've got work to do. Uh, work, work. <laughs> what are we doing? It's like, the... it's like the it's like Schumacher never read one of the comics. No, no it's Bane like Schumacher it. was given a clear brief. Sell toys. Yeah, but well, it, there it, was that, it, that it, as well, but he still could have sold toys and had Bane decent. <laughs> No, of course, it, it, but it's the Transformers yeah. argument, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but they made a billion. Yeah, imagine how much they'd make if they were good. Yeah, it's just so sad. Isn't it? It's so sad how he just demolished anything that was good about Bane. He had the costume, nothing. The costume and the venom, nothing more. It was just not yeah. Bane. I mean, uh, the mask yeah. was still pretty terrible as well. It wasn't even like the typical Bane sure. mask, was it? Really? It was true to a comic run. It wasn't true to Bruce Tim. Mm. Oh um, yeah, that's the one, obviously. Yeah. Night, night um, what's your number nine, mate? Uh, Mad Max. Cool. Mad Max that Fury Road is, is IR number eight. Awesome. So yeah, we're 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 in similar territory, but yeah, go yeah. for it. Again, with this one, I mean, the whole film is just brilliant. Um, I love the whole aesthetic of it, the coloring, just like the um, stunts were just wild. But again, obviously, he's got a mask on a lot of it as well, and he's not in it as much as you. I remember. Like, I rewatched it, and I was like, he's in it quite a bit, but not as much as I would have thought he was going to be. That I remember when I watched it in the cinema. I remember watching it in the cinema. Come up, and I was like, oh, he was so good in it. Again, the theme of this whole thing is I'll be saying about anything that he's probably been in. <laughs> um, that much. Um, but when I rewatched it, I was like, yeah, like he doesn't have as much screen time as I remember a lead having. So, yeah, I'll build on that. I um, very much think that this is Charlie's movie, not his. Mm. And he spends far too much of the movie going. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's just, that's one of his ticks, isn't it? He does that in a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't he know just if grunts. Seen... Yeah, have you seen the TV show The Take that he's been in? No. No. Oh, go watch that. It's like early, I think it's like 2000. Six, I think it is, maybe 2005, potentially. Um, but he plays like this London gangster called Freddie. And um, again, he does all that, all of his typical grunting in that as well. And it's like, so once you spot much it, grunting in this movie. Yeah, once you wow. spot it, that is the one downfall I have with him is that I spot it so much and he does it a lot. But he oh, does well. like to grunt that one. Imagine being his girlfriend. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fury Road is, is a funny one. Because I can't compare it to any other Mad Max movie because I've not seen them funny enough. And I've always said I was going to do it. But it's when Nico was like, it's Mario Kart, the movie. You need to see this. I was like, you what? <laughs> <laughs> this is such an interesting sell. Normally, I'd be like, no, 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 I'm going to do it in order. But I was like, you've intrigued me. <laughs> I need to yeah. see this. And I completely agree. <laughs> it's essentially the, the madness behind it. It was just like... If you it's... put CGI blue shells and red shells and banana peels, it fits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this movie is Mario Kart. I'm sorry. The score is amazing as well in this oh, film. Incredible. Yeah. Listen, I... 
It's Mario Kart meets cocaine bubblegum. That's what this movie is. I don't know what George Miller is eating or taking or smoking uh. or ingesting or injecting. I want it because the way he sees the world, incredible. It's and he hasn't lost a beat. Look at no. for Furiosa. What the hell? Yeah. Furiosa. The man is in his 80s. Good. Oh, Furiosa looks good. Jeez, it looks good. Do you reckon yeah. they're going to do a it's... sequel with Tom? Because obviously there was talk of it. I don't know. Um, it will have Tom. It won't that... have Charlie's, obviously. Well, they won't have yeah. them together. Um, no. <laughs> they're those two. It's weird, isn't it? How two talented. Mm. Well, I suppose, isn't it? Opposites attract and people who are so similar don't get along, mm. right? Like, two, when you're ultra talented like that, you must develop a bit of an ego. Yeah. Even if yeah. you don't show it publicly behind the scenes, you must have a bit of an ego. I mean, look at Christian Bale on the set of Terminator Salvation, The Meltdown. Yeah. And when you see Christian Bell in an interview, yeah, he's a bit grumpy, but he doesn't seem like a raging psychopath. But then you <laughs> see that clip and it's like, whoa. Ooh, <laughs> Damn. He was having a bad day. Definitely oh, he really was, day. wasn't he? So, I mean, I don't know if George Miller would want to work with Tom again, which is a shame because I thought he was great in this. Mm. It's hope. Yeah, definitely. It's hope. It's hope. What's your number eight, Matt? Um, it is The Drop. I do not know this one. No, I've not heard oh, of really? it. No. Sound of Feeney's last Tell me film. more. Tell me more. That was his last film, that was. Bless okay. him. Yeah. Gandolfini. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking it was like one of his uh... last things he, he filmed. So um, it's very good. It's difficult to talk about it without giving it away. Um, mm. His America, his accent in it is very good. When I know that's been questionable um sometimes um i don't know if capone is on your list or not um no. No. okay good um but yeah like <laughs> his accent in that was terrible in this it's okay um again um it's just it's just a really well shot film um and there's a nice little puppy in it as well which you know gotta love animals and yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, again, it's just another film of him that I watched where I was just fascinated with his performance and him with Ganafini, them on screen together was just, oh, yeah. Special, very, right? very good. Yeah, very I'd special. Like um, I highly recommend you to get a chance to watch it if you can. Mm. Cool. cool. No, last. Do you know what? I've only actually ever watched season one of The Sopranos and I already know how good James Gandolfini is. Oh, you want to see a really good James Gandolfini performance? Watch True Romance. He's only in it for about 10, 15 minutes, but wow. You know, I've, I've seen True Romance. But I've uh, actually not started Sopranos. I need to start that. That is one yeah. of my list of things to watch. People who say it say it's the greatest TV show ever. Yeah. I mean, for me, that would be Sons of Anarchy, but, you know. Everyone I think for has me, their... it's probably The Wire. Yes. That is, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty decent show. AJ? It's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know? Funny enough, I've not done I've not done Sons of Anarchy, and I've seen a couple of episodes of The Sopranos. Oh, I'm a bit. I, I know where AJ is going. What? He's going to say Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. My my. How about your mother? It's a bit under a bit under the radar for people, but I loved it. Um, the Shield. I thought The Shield was amazing. Ah, uh, that's that's the I'm same writer who did Sons of Anarchy, isn't it? Kurt Sutter. Is it? Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. That. I've heard that if you, I mean, I've watched obviously, I've watched all of Sons of Anarchy, and I always get told to watch The Shield because it's the same writer. Okay, and this got me interested South in Sons of Anarchy. Well, now. Actually. He did South also, Paul, well, he? as the resident white boy of the silver screen dudes. I wouldn't be a good white boy if I didn't bring up Breaking Bad, the show that every white person went crazy for. <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen it, bro. I have not heard white people talk so much about a show since I think ever. Oh my god, people didn't shut up, but it was so good. I, it was I really so good. In, I really want to get into it. Can't get past episode five. I just, just I worked push, in push, I worked push, in HMV. Push. I worked in HMV when it was literally so popular. That I got so sick of people coming up buying the box and going, "Have you watched this? Have you seen this? Oh, this is amazing!" <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to watch it just for the sake of. I don't want to watch it because I see it every day. <laughs> <laughs> it is incredible. <laughs> It yeah. is actually incredible, it, as I said. And that's on my list to watch, so I will do. Yeah, it's very oh. good. It does 
crash in season five, like all of the interesting stuff happens between sort of halfway through season one up to the end of season four is just it's goated TV. But yeah, anyway, that was your bottom three. Uh, yes. Again, Matt, remember our turn. Don't forget to tell us to punt if we have to. So have your list handy if you don't remember it. It's right uh, here. A AJ, it is over to you, mon ami. No, it's over to you. Is it over to me? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> my, my number 10. I love this film. All-star cast and Tom Hardy is epic in it. Lawless. Love punt. this film. Or is it punt? Punt, punt, punt. I agree okay. with that punt. And it's you, AJ. It's, to be honest, because there's a lot of commonality in our list, this is the one film that Nico had that I've not seen, so I couldn't rank it, hence why it's so low. Okay. Um, right. As we said earlier, there was an honorary. This was why The Dark Knight Rises was an honorary for us. Venom. Um, that is yeah. a punt slight punt oh. yes cool okay <laughs> right and then our number eight was fury road which we spoke about so back over to you so Matt. back to matt uh number seven for me is venom lol oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. most most long-winded way ever of getting to a movie i love it <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love this show. Rules be rules, though. Rules be rules. He understands I the love concept it. of the show. I appreciate that. I love it. I love it. Cool. All right. right. Well, He's speak better. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You had it highest, mate. So it's your. The floor is yours. Oh Jesus. Um, he is so good in this. When it comes to the duality of Eddie and Venom, I think he just does it so well. And it wasn't until after the film that I did the research that I found out that he did the voice of Venom. Because I think he does yeah. sound completely yeah, different in it. Voice. Yeah, like the voice is... Like they, it, obviously, he's going to sound different. But I didn't catch any of his voice in it, if that makes sense. And I, no, and I really no, like that. It's like it was like it was basically trying to take a hold of him sort of thing. Like, And the comedy aspect of it as well, I thought was done oh, very well. Very, gold. very well. Absolute gold. Yeah. Still, there are two scenes in comic book movies in the last sort of 10, 15 years that I don't know why they put me in stitches. Carl Urban in Thor Ragnarok when he's chatting up the two girls before, <laughs> right at the beginning before the dragon burst through and he goes, I am scroll. Behold my stuff. I don't know why the just, timing of him just showing this mountain of junk and going in this kind of grandiose behold my stuff. It's just <laughs> like I don't know why it kills me. And the other one is in venom. Just be careful. When they... Yeah. Just just remember. Don't say the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he insinuates that Eddie is a female genitalia beginning with the letter P. And it's when they're on the top of the building, he's in the suit and he goes. Jump, Eddie. Yeah. And then it cuts, and he's back inside, and the lift goes, and Venom just goes, Pup. you know. So good. <laughs> so good. So good. I, bro, projectile Coca Cola. Oh, yes. And the Deadpool, <laughs> I bet it feels so big in this hand. That was great, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was like, awesome I, good I think, like, for, I, was, I went in thinking it was going to be very much, let's, let's put it bluntly, the, the Sony. Superhero stuff hasn't been the greatest, we say. Hit and miss. Um, hit and miss. Very hit and miss. So I was I was really worried, to be honest, actually, going into this film. Because he, he was attached to it, I was thinking, oh, come on, don't be another my worst film of his. I'm like, I hope it's not going to be one of these ones again. But, yeah, I was very, very surprised at how good they did it. I was very happy with it. Sony were a frustrating one. People say. Sony are frustrating because when they get it right, they mm. really get it right. You yeah. know, the Spider Verse movies are great. I still maintain Sony oh. have made the two best Spider Man movies ever into the Spider Verse and Spider Man mm -hmm. 2. When they get it right, they're on point. Yep. This I thought was really good. Um, this may be completely blind, but it's because I love Aaron Taylor Johnson. I have hope, yes, praise for Craven. Yeah, it's yeah. good, it's not going to be good, but I'm praying. Yeah, it's also it's been it's not out for a very long time, is it? October. 
keeps on being delayed, mate. I don't yeah. know if it's going to see the light of day. I'll tell you this. I oh. think who, if Aaron Taylor Johnson is James Bond, his publicist is doing everything they can mm. to get that movie delayed. Because if Craven, <laughs> if Craven sucks, it will be the equivalent of Tom Hiddleston wearing the I Heart Taylor Swift t-shirt. It's like, and gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> no more Bond for you. Oh, dear. It's scary. It's scary that it's yeah. yeah. You're, you're as good as your last movie, and with <laughs> with the way Sony Spider Man movies have been going, Spider Man Universe movies have been going. Madam Web, anyone? Right. It's just <laughs> it's just not. I refused. Watching, so. Did not see it. Refused. Uh, yeah, I don't know anyone yeah, who's seen it. I, I, watched, not, I, I do not. To, um, a nice little nice little plug for the uh, Just Go Watch guys uh, podcast. Um, if you haven't listened to them, guys, have a listen to them. They're hilarious, and um. They do obviously the reviews and stuff, and they how they explained Madam Web. I was like, "There's, I'm not even giving it even a thought. There's no <laughs> way, I'm not. Even, I can't, I can't. Like some of the stuff that they were talking about, I was like, "Well, yeah." Literally, the trailer apparently is like the only bits that you actually see of them in the suits. Apparently, like, they're in it for like literally like a minute. I'm like, don't put that in the trailer. All right, tease teases. There's obviously a word you put in front of that, but yeah, I won't do that because uh, I respect you guys too much. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Minimal editing that's going on on the Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. Venom, very much like yourself, Matt, I was kind of scared. And especially in mm. a world that I'm very much familiar with Venom, not like Nico through like 101 different comics, through the old <laughs> Fox Kids cartoon. So for me to see yes, Venom, I... I need to see Spider Man. So here is a film where you're going to focus on Venom and I'm not going to see Spider-Man. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. But it really did. And the comedy that mm -hmm. came out, and as you said, the duality of, of how Tom handled it was amazing. And the, the voice character, I thought, he, yeah, he, he owned it. And yeah, it, it was something that I was really apprehensive with. And I got really excited for Venom too. And it didn't deliver as much. But I thought Venom was a, a, a really good thing to the second one. What's that, I don't sorry? hate it. I don't hate it, but it could have been better. I do believe oh, it could have been better. Me. It annoyed me. I thought they had the right person to play Carnage, and I thought they oh. fluffed their lines. Yeah. Oh, you've got a, a powerhouse like Woody with Tom, and I was thinking, yeah, that's a match made in heaven. Surely, surely it's going to be good. And I was just like, nah, it was okay. Like, it was all right. I still AJ watched it and loved it because Tom. A AJ's me. dying. AJ's dying. AJ, speak. Speak. I know it's killing you. Speak. Speak. You must I'm go big screen. Sipping. Speak. I'm intentionally sipping my water. You must speak. <laughs> Matt has not heard this. You must speak. I'm not the biggest Woody Harrison in film fans. I like Woody Harrison. I used to think Woody Harrison just like was really exciting. I, I enjoy him in Cheers. I've enjoyed him in even these sporadic appearances in Will and Grace. I always thought Woody was really good. And I just, his films have not. Maybe it's high expectation for Woody, but it just never hit the way I've expected. So when I saw it was Carnage, I was like, is he? Yeah, is he stopping me? You're going to bring AJ up a so... right? No, 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 no. I'm, I, there, there's one, and this happened before... Oh, well, I saw Matt moving. I thought he was picture. bringing up a natural born killer's poster to like, <laughs> shut me up. No, 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 I was letting the cat out. I there was AJ's... AJ's bias for Woody Harrelson is actually quite deep. I remember, I think this is going back a few years now, but again, arsehole with eidetic memory here. Um, <laughs> when War for the Planet of the Apes came out, I put the review out on our old channel, and I was like, this isn't very good. AJ, having not even seen the movie, jumps in and goes, I told you a lot about Woody Harrelson, man. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like are you kidding me? The agenda. Oh my god, man it hasn't even seen it. Okay. He doesn't know deep. what I haven't even had a chance to say the movie's bad because of X. Like <laughs> I'm still it says on WhatsApp, Nico is typing and AJ is jumping <laughs> on that Woody Harrelson guy. I'm like, I haven't even told you why it's bad yet. He's just assumed <laughs> it's Woody's fault. <laughs> All Woody's fault. It's, the agenda is deep. And then you list his filmography, and I'm like, where do you not like this guy? <laughs> It's like, nah, he's dead to me. Like, I don't get it. I think it you need is. to have a Ryan Gosling. I think you need to have your Ryan Gosling moment. It may happen. It may happen, but it hasn't as yet. 
And again, I went into Venom 2 with hope that it would. And what did everyone say? It didn't work. So I'm not, I'm not wrong. And was I don't that, that Woody's that fault? Was it Woody's fault that Venom 2 sucked? No, but would you say he was a good carnage? Yeah, okay. yeah I would. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think he was. I don't think he was. I think he was a very good Cletus Cassidy. And would you say I think. he was good in the Apes movie? I don't think in- he was. He was good in the Apes movie. The Apes movie wasn't bad because of him. <laughs> the Apes movie was bad because they did a really <laughs> ham fisted Moses like, story. Really hate Woody, don't you? Oh, it's I deep, bro. He's not even just... aware of how deep his hate is. That's the terrible thing. It's weird, because I don't... it's weird because I was such a Woody Harrelson fan and I'm just watching some of these films. I'm like, it's just not working for me. Did you like him as Carnage, Matt? Yeah, I thought he was good. I thought he played the part really well. Again, it was just it was the studio messed it up. Like those yeah. two were very good. Yeah. The studio just messed it up because they were too busy trying to figure out how to put him into the MCU. Mm-hmm. Carnage was let Which, down by being a formulaic movie. Mm. It was like action it's scene character piece, piece, action scene character piece, action scene finale. I'm like, okay, why don't you just copy every single Terminator movie that's ever yeah. been made with your pacing here? Jesus Christ, have some impetus for creativity, please. Cool. Like cool. you can't but anyway. You can't hold a bad script at Woody's feet, you know? Like you can't polish no. a turd. No, you can't. You can't. But hey. If you put diamonds like in a turd, it is still a turd. It's just a sparkly <laughs> yeah. one. But Tom was good as Venom in both, and that's the focus. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> you see what I mean, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Matt, your number six, please. Yeah, uh, my number six is Rock and Roller. Very good film. We left it off on the basis that we don't think Tom was in it enough. Yeah, yeah. that that is what I've got. So, the, but the scenes with Handsome Bob were just very, very good. I think very I good. saw I saw this after I'd seen Bronson, and I think Rock and Roller came out before Bronson. And I remember going, Ah, oh, look. That's, that's that guy. I really like him. Um, mm. I think they, those scenes just stick out, like the dancing scene where they had the dance together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just ah, oh, I was like, yeah. He's just so like the way he delivers his lines in those film. I thought was just very, very good. Um, but again, yeah, he, he's not in the film that much with the scenes, and it was I did I nearly didn't put it on, but because his scenes were so good and it elevated the rest of the film, I had to put it on there. Because the film, as you say, is just brilliant. It is brilliant. It's really one of Guy Ritchie's unsung heroes. Yeah, I really hope we. I really hope we get it. Um, it's Toby. It's Toby Toby Kebbell's movie, though, isn't it? He could still do it. He could still do a sequel. Surely, of course, he could. One hundred percent, and he would love to do it. I bet he would. I feel bad for Toby Kebbell. You know, I feel really bad for Toby Kebbell because mm. I think him as Cobra, again, bringing it back mm. to Planet of the Apes, one of the Brilliant. great unsung Brilliant. performances. It's like Paul Dano, unlucky mm. because he gave one of his career best performances, but shared screen with Daniel Day Lewis, who gave his career best performance. Mm-hmm. Freaking Toby Kebbell was incredible as Cobra. Unfortunately, happened to be acting alongside the goat of motion yeah. capture, so everyone was talking about circus. Have one of you, yeah. have either of you two seen Dead Man's Shoes? Oh, my man, yeah. that's a movie. That's, he's in that, isn't it? That is him, isn't it? He's the special needs kid in that, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm tr- we're trying to get well, uh, can I say this? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, our next season, I think, is potentially going to be uh, best of British and Irish films. A to Z, only because we really want Rob to watch Dead Man's Shoes because he's not seen it. How he has he not seen Dead like Man's it. Shoes? Oh, we know, we know. That and Tyrannosaurus as well. I've mentioned Dead Man's Shoes to you, AJ. Definitely. It's, 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 been, it's, it's, I'm telling you now, next time you get a spare two hours. It's short. It's, it's yeah, short. Not even. It's an hour and a half. It's super so, short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ha- please, please, please watch it. Incredible I watch and, for you as well. You can watch Dead Man's Shoes for us, bro. Paddy Considine in that. Oh, dude. And oh. the guy who plays the villain, Gary Stretch, he's actually a friend of my Ooh. family. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Yeah, Stretch, he's a friend of ours, yeah. Um, now, AJ, you would love Dead Man's mm. Shoes. And okay. the plot twist. Booyah! Now that M. Night Shyamalan can suck it, that's a plot yeah. twist. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to make sure I can, because especially, a um, bit of a spoiler to other silver screen dude shows, Much, a few months down, but it will be um, <laughs> in our um, this 2004 release. So, yeah. Oh, <gasps> is it actually? Oh my god, it's a TBT movie. Good lord, yeah, yeah. October, but yeah. Oh. okay. Wow. I told yeah. you, man, I told you this year on our classic movie review show, it is literally murderer's row. There are yeah, so many big movies that are like 10, 20, 30 years old, it's crazy. It's I'll do absolutely my best. I'll, crazy. Yeah, I'll, well, when I say do my best, I, I will definitely see it before that, but I'll try and catch it sooner. Mm -hmm. So, it's Matt, that was man. your number six, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, AJ, so I believe this is you. Can you take this one? Because I'd prefer to talk about the next one. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. You, yeah, yeah. We are definitely... Yeah, by order, it would be that. So... Whoop, oh, there you go. So, yeah, that's both of us having control of something. In at number seven, we are back in the world of... Um, oh, forget, I can't remember the director's name. Um, Nolan. Yeah, yeah, Christopher Nolan, Inception. Not on your list, Matt. It's not on my list, no. Yeah. Look, um, yeah, is it is it Leo's movie? Yes. Uh, like where where mm. Tom Holland Listen, where 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 Tom falls is, is it's a bit of a funny one, but I always remember being blown away by this movie. And, I, and what I will say is I think everyone played their part in this movie. You know, well, that's yes, that's what it to me. Yeah. Um what Nolan done with that film. And going back to what you were saying earlier with the way Bane was portrayed and um the, the lack of special effects. When mm. you see what what Nolan put together in order to create a world that's <laughs> been, you were like, no, 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 no. This is this is some high level madness. And essentially, it, it's a heist movie of of such a mad creation. We're talking about delving into people's dreams in order to extract their information to get what you need. And what happens is when people are, their subconscious goes in, this is the action levels that gets there. And as I said, yes, I, you know, you could argue whose movie it is and whose level of appearance is in there. But I was blown away by it. And I honestly feel everyone, there isn't a character mm. you could be like, oh, who was weak. And Tom Hardy is included in that. I thought it was like, I like your character and his style. It works so awesome for me. I, I really enjoyed that. I think he had yeah. just the amount, right amount of screen time in it as well, I think. Yeah. They what they did, did they with this in Tom Hardy, it. I thought they made him really cool. And that's he's always been cool, but he's always kind of been like the gruff one. Not that, or level, the, or no. not that level of cool. There was something infinitely cool about just seeing him, you know, sipping a little Americano, sitting in a suit in the middle of was it Mozambique they went to? Yeah. And just can being completely chill. And I was like, I don't know what it is. I love everything about you. Do yeah. you know with you saying that as well? Do you know what it reminds me of? It's that level of cool you found in, with Brad Pitt in Ocean's Eleven. You know, there's that there's mm. an unattainable mm. cool. And that, that, yeah. that yeah, I'll agree with you there. <laughs> These guys have managed to secure it. Yeah. yeah. 100%. No, they have. And listen, I think Inception's one of those movies which it's such a lazy argument. I really do. I do hate things about fandom of any sort that when something is just so universally loved, it then becomes trendy to hate on it. Oh, Avatar. The I mean, listen, I'm on, I'm on record for quoting my friend, Ralph. I mean, this is going back a few years now, but he he's known to say, oh, you like the Avatar movie. It's a gay Smurf movie. <laughs> 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 you know, it's fun banter. But let's also be real. Anyone anyone and i think i might have been even part of this because you know avatar came along it became the most successful movie of all time and then people were like yeah but it hasn't really captured the cultural zeitgeist and it didn't you know when you look at halloween or you look at comic cons ain't no one showing up as a navi and there was and it was so long between number one and number two that people were really like okay yeah lightning in a bottle made the most successful movie ever is it really gonna hit a second time and it made two billion again. I'm like, yes, people so. clearly love this franchise to death, mm -hmm. and which is why when for the last ten years, when I've been hearing people like Ralph, bless him, going, "Oh, it's a gay Smurf movie," it's like two billion, bro. 
2 billion for mm-hmm. all the haters out there. Y'all were there supporting the second movie and y'all are licking your lips when it comes to seeing the next 10 or however bloody hell many it is he's making. <laughs> and Inception's one of those movies, you know, South Park, tra- not trashed on it, but took the mickey out of it going, oh, it's too clever for its own good. Oh, it'll be so epic, a dream within a dream within a dream. It's like, yeah, shut up. Cool. Yeah. Yes, it's a dream within a dream within a dream. And that's cool. But the thing is, that's why you, like, you can never, you can't place everyone because everyone's like, oh, they're just doing remakes all the time. And then Nolan comes along to something pretty original and then people still hate on it. You're like, okay. Do you mean you can't have, you can't have both? No, you can't. And I'd like to build on that because you've just given me perfect tangentiality here. AJ <laughs> yeah, and I, you, that, that's a good word, tangentiality, the tangibilization. AJ <laughs> and I are really lucky, actually, that we, that we do this classic show because I'll tell you what mm. we see because obviously I'm there scrolling going back movies that came out in 1934 44 all the way through to 2014 because we, yep. we go by decades backwards right do you know what I see looking at the cinema listings over the course of the decades more and more you get into modern times progressively more and more original movies are being made and I don't just mean by one or two I mean by hundreds Mm. hundreds you look at movies like go on a site called the numbers look at movies that came out in may 2014 you'll have seen the big hitters on there you know maybe you'll have seen chef or go back 20 years maybe you will have seen van helsing sure chef. the oh, great yeah thing. chef is 10 years old man you Isn't look it? at the big Jesus. shit it's 10 years old yep god you I look at the <laughs> amazing spider-man 2 was 10 years old last week how's that for old that's 10 years old already right um, oh, and these are the movies that the studios want you to see. And what annoys me about film fandom when they're like, they don't make original movies anymore. It's like, no, 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 no. The promotional material you're seeing for the big temple mm. blockbusters or the Oscar darlings is what they want you to see. If you had any initiative, you'd even on Amazon Prime, man, and I'm I, I'm on record on this channel not being the biggest fan of streaming services, but like Go, jump on Amazon Prime right now. And I only know this from working with Premier Coms recently. The brand yeah. new Anne Hathaway movie, The Idea of You, oh, yeah. Yeah. straight to streaming. How Legitimately, I'm asking the audience now and I'm asking the podcast listeners, how many people have actually watched that? Completely original movie, big you movie star in it. I thought it was coming out, you know. I didn't look. Nope, I, it's I out. It was, Who's actually I watched it? Who's it actually taken out. the initiative to set a notification yeah. and been like, cool, let me go watch this? Swede Caroline, that new British mockumentary that came out. Who's seen it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And these are just two movies I'm picking out of thin air. And there are hundreds of original movies that came out this month alone. So this boring soundbite, oh, Hollywood only makes remakes and sequels and prequels and that. BS, man. But you know what? Another never, original concept, never. Which hasn't been, I don't know, didn't get a lot of love. Seen this one, Ricky Stan- Staniski, Staniki, whatever. Oh, Ricky Staniki reviewed it on the channel. It's a laugh. I gave it a pass. I liked it. Oh, yeah, I quite like that. I watched that. Yeah, uh, me too. When did it come out? Was it last month or month before? Yep. Yeah, yeah something yeah, like that. Watched, you know, it was literally me and my girlfriend. We just wanted something to just easy to watch in, sit down, have a laugh. Needed a yep. laugh. We got a laugh from it. And that's what you want. There John go. Cena's got great comedy chops, oh. man. But yeah, that, that's an example about supporting him. Roadhouse is another example, although that's a bit easier because it's a big temple. It just happens mm-hmm. to be released on streaming. But like taking the idea of views and your Roadhouse and your Ricky Stanicky's out of it because they've all got big major movie stars, right? Yeah. Go and find the independent movies. Like there's so much good stuff coming out at the moment and most people aren't watching it because they're plugged into YouTube or they mm-hmm. only see the trailers that play at the cinema, but then they're so quick to pass the baton of judgment and be like, there's no original movies coming out anymore. When actually, not opinion, fact, there has never been a time in cinema history ever that more original content has been coming out. I just want to acknowledge very quickly before people start putting in the comments, we are aware Roadhouse is a remake. I just, I, that's the only one that <laughs> oh, can't follow. Don't the even go there with me. If anyone's about to jump into the comments, suck it and get a life. No, no, no. But they're going to be like, you said original content. You said Roadhouse. So I'm just shutting it off now before you d- delete well the comments. Well played, because there's going to be some little Billy No oh, Mates out there who's going to say that. So well done. Um, that, that just shows that people are just lazy. Like, 
hundred percent. So lazy. And I'll, I'll be first to admit that sometimes I miss some of these films because, again, I've just seen the adverts for like the big films that are coming out. When mm-hmm. I know I could easily do a deep dive and try and find something a bit different. But again, because everything is so accessible for everyone, like yep. the fact that you can watch a film on your phone, Jesus, I, there's no it's way crazy. we thought of that when I was at school. I mean, I didn't even have a phone <laughs> when I was at school. I'm that old. Like, Snake. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, Nokia. Yeah, um, I think people have just got used to being able to have stuff just handed to them straight away yeah. without actually doing a bit of research. Again, right? Some of the, I mean, I mean, you might have heard my number one on this list, but I bet you a lot of people wouldn't have done. But if you just done a little mm. bit of di- d- uh, deep dive in, I mean, if you're a big fan of Tom's, you would be able to find that film. But I bet you some people just won't do that, and they'll just wait for whatever the next one's coming out. Um, which to be fair, mm-hmm. that does look quite good as well. But, yeah, the bike riders does look yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. But I bet you anything that's going to go under the radar. You know, the full guy mm-hmm. out at the cinemas now. Two big movie stars. It's going to lose money. It is going <laughs> to lose money, it, and, and it's a fun film. And people are not going to go and see it. And these are the same people who are going to say no original content is being made. Not only is that a big, easy to watch blockbuster that's been advertised, it's also an original movie. I know it's a remake but, of a TV but, show. Come on. Yes. yes. <laughs> but can I say that? Can I also say that? I don't think the trailer does the film justice. I went on a whim. The trailer did not appeal to me. The trailer for The Fall Guy is not as good as the film. That's my personal opinion. So my, I would it's on my list. Recommend, I would recommend going to see that film, but the trailer it's did fun. not appeal to me. It's a lot of fun. Review on the silver screen dudes now, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm number right. six. Our number six, and funnily enough, we're keeping with the Tom Hardy, Leonardo DiCaprio dynamic, um, and we're going with The Revenant. Um, now, this is an interesting one because it won Leo his Oscar. Mm. And I won't prescribe to the noise of it was a consolation prize. Should he have won an Oscar for The Departed in The Wolf of Wall Street? Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. I'd need to review who he was also up against that year. That's also important. But he was sensational in The Wolf of Wall Street. And yes, he was overdue winning, considering how many great performances he put in. But this is not a consolation. Let's not be under any illusion here. DiCaprio was sensational in The Revenant. But I think Hardy was better. Really? I actually think Hardy outshone him in this movie. Even just go to the opening of that film there's there's a lot that you can he's magnetizing you you're you're encapsulated yes. by Hardy in this film i think as a, you you can see he's sneaky from the beginning it's something about him that really has you like i'm intrigued by you you you, you I, your your character interests me i want to see what you're bringing and obviously we see what he brings and you're like oh oh you you yeah no i i, I really you know, i'm really worrying that he is so good at doing that though like there's quite a lot of films that he's doing, and you're like, like the take for instance you watch him in the take the tv show i mentioned earlier you're like you are nasty you are a nasty person in this you are horrendous I, I, there's nothing about your character that you like sort of but he's just so good at doing it and then he's so again, good at like, doing it he's so sneak like he is a sneaky little snake in this isn't he he's just <laughs> I mean, and I, it's again, this exact PG, reason. Sorry, go on. Again, I'm being PG with it, but he is oh, he's just dirty. He's a little see you next Tuesday. I agree. Oh, yes. um, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it's when I watch The Revenant and when mm. I hear people say Tom Hardy should be Bond, I'm like, no, Tom Hardy should be a Bond villain. Oh, Tom Hardy would be. Can you imagine casting, remaking not... Goldeneye, for instance, and casting Tom Hardy as Alec Trevelyan? <laughs> Yes, please. Give me that I... for days. Give me that for days. Even if it's not called Goldeneye, the same way that they brought Blofeld back for the Craig verse. Can yeah. you imagine Tom Hardy as Bond's best friend? Because you would completely buy Tom Hardy as someone who could knock the crap out of James Bond. But, but could you imagine that that fantasy of ATJ and Tom Hardy, like having that chemistry in the uh... beginning and then going to show? That, oh. Yeah. See what yeah, I mean? Yeah, just, this just, is why. Just, put me in charge of casting. Oh, this is a PG. PG, come on. Let's turn it down. Turn it down. <laughs> I want to be able to stand up after this. Hold my bit. Hold my bit. Oh, man. 
I, the idea, even if it's not Trevelyan, just Tom Hardy as a Bond villain. Look how good he is in the Revenant as the guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's sneaky, but then at the end, he also shows that yeah, don't mess. Right, that's what's so good about him. He's 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 yep. cerebral, but he's also physical. That like he's pinky blinders as the villain. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, like he, you you love him, and then you hate him just as much as you love him in it. Yep. So Revenant, my number six, the movie that won DiCaprio his Oscar, and I think Hardy outshone him, and I don't think people couldn't condemn, credit him enough for it. Mm. Monsieur Mathieu, your number five. Uh, legend. Oh, no. No, no, no. This that is, is a pun. pun. That is a pun. <laughs> right. Okay, so we're in no, one of territory. No, no, no. It's over not. to you, right, AJ? Yep. Right. Um, once again, the world of Nolan <laughs> returns. But I thought that... Masks. I, I was blown, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's in a mask yet again. I was blown by this movie. And I know it's kind of trendy to hate on it. I was shocked by that as well. Does the image come up for you guys? There we go. Dunk it up. has, yeah. Incredible. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, Absolutely I really, incredible. I really liked Dunkirk when I saw it. It took me, mm. I think we was doing on, it's when we were doing our Nolan episode that I came across yeah. Dunkirk. And if I'm not mistaken, it may have been my number one. If not, it was definitely top five, ter like top three territory. And again, kind of like Inception, it's how each person plays their role. And having Tom Hardy just in the skies... <laughs> As you said, Nico, behind the mask, it's not a chance to get that that uber cool charisma that you get from him in Inception. But mm. he captivates you. The journey his character goes on, the will he make it, how will he make it, it got it has got you gripped. I I oh. was it it his <laughs> his presence in that little cockpit when you yeah. when you see this. All this you see from Hardy saying, for the whole movie you can't is this get charisma, but it still oozes like. <laughs> The presence he has, it's wrong. just oh, mate. Yeah, that film, uh, Dunkirk that is a work film. of art. Again, trendy to hate I on it. So taken by it. Go away. And when it, again in that episode, when you in that that we done, and you're like, people don't like Dunkirk. I was like, what? Why? Yeah. You know, the, you know when it ticks all the boxes of what you're looking for. Mm. I found it, yeah. and you know, it, you've got it from all different angles of war. I, I thought it delivered. I nothing I can. Hate on it. My favorite Again, argument that I've heard about it was when people said, um, oh, who's the villain in Dunkirk? I'm like, the Germans. I'm like, well, how'd you know that? You never saw them. I'm like, well, one, history. Two, that was the point. Uh, <laughs> two, that was the point of the movie. It's the unseen enemy coming at you from all sides while you're trying to escape. Bullets whizzing past you, not knowing which direction they're coming from. And the overall feeling of they're coming from literally everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. That, that bugs me. Sorry, I, I'm going I'm to cut here. Because I bet you those are the same people that really enjoy Spotlight. And I feel Spotlight was the one film that, as much as we knew the church was the villain, lacked the presence of the villain. But I bet yeah. you people will stand up for that. That's the film I say, where's the villain? Not Dunkirk. Sorry. I just need Dunkirk's incredible. Man, incredible. Your fault. No, no, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> 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 cool. yeah, I, still, um, I still don't understand how he can just act with his eyes. Like, uh, how talented does someone have to be where you can just be like, crazy. "Oh yeah, he's giving me that emotion. Oh, and now that emotion, and all I can see is his eyes." Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I like again honorable mention. That's why I, um, Lock. Have you seen that? Fine. Where's your... Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's pun territory. Right? Sorry. I'll, I'll, shut, I'll shut up. Your go. Okay. Or was it my go? Um, your go. You're number four, sir. Oh, number four is Lawless. Ah, the punt from earlier. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yes. This cast. Oh. Guy Pierce. Yes. yes. Thank him you. And, him and Guy Pierce. Oh. Seeing those two together on screen, I was like, this is brilliant. This is a masterpiece to get these two, both who are very good at character, acting, whatever you want to call it. I mean, the fact that Guy Pearce found out about the film, shaved his eyebrows, cut his hair before even getting the part, sent in a video to the director and was like, I want, to, I want this part. This is what I think it should look like. 
you know, imagine if he didn't get it. <laughs> how, long he, how long he'd have to wait for his eyebrows to grow back. I mean, yep. the guy's a millionaire, so he's just sitting in his mansion for however many months. But, I mean, still, it's like the dedication is ridiculous. What I love that you've mentioned Guy Pearce here is that when you consider that Guy Pearce was the goody yeah. two-shoes straight edge guy in LA Confidential, and then you see this, it's like people don't rate Guy enough, man. Guy is class. He's not rated enough. He's not rated enough. He is one, not yeah. rated no. enough. Guy Ritchie is cl- not Guy Ritchie, sorry, yeah. Guy yeah. Pearce. He's mm. absolute class. But Shia LaBeouf, man, he's another one. He's so mm. good in this. Dane DeHaan is amazing in this. Gary Oldman. When is Gary Oldman not amazing? Yeah. And Tom Hardy, man. It's just everything about this freaking movie works. Um, AJ, if you haven't seen it, the story is basically it's it's three brothers. Mm. Tom Hardy, uh, Jason Clark, and Shia Jason LaBeouf. God, they're, he's not and a... they're, they're moonshine runners. Um, and it's just as prohibition is kind of ebbing and flowing. Um, and Guy Pierce gets sent in to track them down and through very, very horrible means manages to get close to them, manipulate them, hurt them. Yeah. And, you know, Jason Clark is kind of the gung ho hit first, ask questions later. Shia yeah. LaBeouf is kind of the Weasley little, I want to be tough like my brothers, but I'm not. He's trying and to Tom Hart. Tom, Tom yeah. Forrest. And yeah. Tom Hardy is just, In if he gets angry, be somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I've just added that and dead man. I know who Tom Hardy should be. I've thought of it. Perfect Tom Hardy villain. Jaws. Oh, yeah. Give him the glass teeth. Yeah, that's a good shot, actually. And Sorry. make more of the character. But there you are. The scene I love in that is where when he smashes Shia LaBeouf in the face with a gun. The butt of the gun. I was like, because yeah. at that point, I was, I'll be honest, with you, I'm not a massive Shia LaBeouf fan. Some of the stuff he's done is all right. I remember watching it and I'm thinking, like, Irina, she always wants to punch Toby Maguire in the face. Me, it's Shia LaBeouf. I, co- I co sign Irina. Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of just want to, I don't know, he's just got that punchable face, isn't he? And then seeing Tom Hardy smash him with that gun, I was like, yes, I enjoyed that bit. <laughs> like no application of violence. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. We didn't say we do. I can't. But we understand. But we understand. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Again, yeah. That's, that's also, that I mean, I'm really into my music, so the soundtrack for that is really good as well. Very, very good. I don't remember it enough. Remind uh, me. The score is pretty decent. We've obviously got a lot of bluegrass and blues and stuff, and I'm really into that. So, yeah, mm. big fan. Big, big fan. Well, it fit the period, didn't it? Yeah, now, AJ, sure. this is one really, it's a little hidden gem. I can't recommend mm-hmm. it enough. Lawless yeah, is listen, great. That and Dead Man's Shoes I've put on my list, and just because um, it's been acknowledged by the bigger movie pod, I will be going on Ooh. AJ Vision to find it. <laughs> <laughs> we acknowledge you, AJ. We acknowledge you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. That was your four, Matt. So our four. Is this you or me, AJ? It's me, isn't it? Mm? Yeah, four is it. Four is is me. Okay, cool. Let me flip in here. The Shape of His Life. Warrior. Yes, a movie. Slight punt. Slight punt. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Over to you then. My number three is Warrior. Oh right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm playing. I'm playing by the rules, guys. Okay. Yeah, Warrior, cool. man. It's it's. But yeah, cool. it, what were you going to say about his seeking this? It is just all my dreams. I wish I could look half as decent as that without my top on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go for a quarter. I would go for a quarter. A quarter, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I used well, to a, look a, like that. Big, yeah, I'm a big MMA fan as well. So when when I f- saw this was coming out, I was like, Pfft. I mean, I was going to see it anyway because it's got Tom in it. But oh, just again. Well, you know, I used more. to fight, don't you? Yes. We've, we've, we've yeah. talked, uh, Thai, wasn't it? Thai boxing, wasn't it? Muay Thai, yeah. I Muay used Thai, to yeah. look like this. 
Not quite that chiseled, but I, mean, I used to look some photos, close to that. Nico, more drill, more drill than Tom. In my way, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More Joel than Tom, you're quite right. The, the, the traps Tom had was next level. He was like Chris oh. Benoit, no neck. <laughs> Jesus. The guy was just... I love the no-nonsense. His entrance, just walk in, black shorts, boom, walk yeah. out, job done. My favourite part of that whole movie, the part which I thought was truest to life, was actually none of the arena cage fighting. Yep. It was that opening 20 minutes when he's training yeah. in the gym. Yes. The way they shot that to make it feel oh, really gritty, really mm -hmm. underground. I was like, this is on point. This yep. is ex you could smell the Muay Thai lint. You could smell the tiger balm and the sweat in that place. <laughs> and I was like, this is exactly what a Thai boxing gym feels like. It's a bit grimy. It's a bit dirty. There's a brotherhood. And there's always some chippy see you next Tuesday who wants yep. to rule the roost and get sparked out. I was like, this is so accurate what they're showing. It's crazy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I loved it. Um, one of the scenes that I really enjoyed was the um, quite near the end in the hotel room with his dad. In oh, the bed. brilliant. With oh. Moby Dick. So good. Oh, again, the casting in this, all three of them were spectacular. They played off each other so well. They were so believable as a family, Yeah, like dysfunctional family. Yeah. Yep. And you could, they all had their pieces and they all fit together so perfectly. Um, yeah, I just thought, and again, fight scenes were done really well. And then just the dialogue, the dialogue, how it, it, you just, it was just, they were allowed to just speak to each other and have a conversation. I thought it was brilliant. It felt very organic, didn't it? There was, yes. there was nothing ham fisted or cheesy about this. I was like, no, I not. feel like I, I don't feel like an audience member. I feel like a fly on the wall looking at a really mm -hmm. effed up family dynamic. And I was yes. like, perfect, perfect. 100%. It's the level of depth in the conversation, as you said, Matt. It's, it's mm. like you've got the great fight scenes, but then it, you you flip that coin and you've just got this depth of, as you said, dysfunctional family. It, it mm -hmm. it's very very well put together. I, I agree when you said the the, the casting of the three family members. Is yeah. chef's kiss. It's chef's kiss. It just yeah. works. Yeah. The brotherly love, love, hate, whatever, and how it how it ends, I thought was just how it went full circle was was amazing. Yeah, hand on the shoulder. Let's get out of oh. here. It was very, very oh. good. Very so good. Funny. Brothers, brothers fight and they make up. I was like, yeah. what a great way to say such a simple sentiment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember, fight. Um, literally I, remember, yeah. <laughs> I think after this i think one of the ufc games had come out um and i made a, a tommy um conlon on the game <laughs> nice. such a sad git i know but no <laughs> no awesome. i would be tempted to do i would probably would <laughs> i would absolutely do that um yeah. All right, so that was R four, your three. So that's then R three, AJ, which I think is your territory. Yes, so yes, yes. Um, it's the punt from earlier. It's Tom Hardy squared, legend. I uh, Tom Hardy squared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what I love about this, I mean, obviously, it's, we could talk duality. It, it the, the cranes are a bunch of nutters anyway, but the way really? Tom plays. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, um, the way Tom <laughs> owned both parts, it, I, I, I was, I remember just sitting back at this film and just giggling, but also shocked. I, I was just so mm. impressed by the fact that he can play both of them, and he, he, he gives each of them the, the different quirks that was needed. I was like, I really like this. I really like this. And yeah. as much as I've heard of the craze, I wasn't familiar with the craze story. Mm. So seeing that as well yeah. was something that had me like, right. okay, I knew, I knew, okay, I, knew this, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. Oh, no. what have you. And and Tom took me on that journey. It, I, I, at no point was I like, oh, you, I, you know, it. I, how can I say? I was invested so much that I'm like, this is a great story. Then I sit back after, and I'm like, Tom actually done really well here. He's he's handled both <laughs> of these parts. So that's what yeah. I loved about it. Is I'm, I'm I'm on the journey, and I sat back and I went. That was actually one man doing both parts. I I, I like this even more. It, it it really enjoyed this film. Um, Again, this, and this a lot been... in the way he was so different from the <laughs> role. So That's good. not right. Our mother didn't teach us <laughs> to hurt women. 
again, this could have been so cheesy. This could have been. I remember when they cast him to play both. I was like, oh, is this gonna, is this gonna work? But it really did work. That fight, the fight scene between the two of them, was so well done. Where they had oh, the it was pure the... handbags, wasn't it? That's what oh, was great. It's like oh these two God. hard men, but when they're brotherly fighting, it's like handbags. So, oh, but it was just so clever, just so yeah. so clever. I came here for a fight. <laughs> it's going to bring a knife to a effing gunfight. <laughs> oh dear, brutal. So and, and, good. So, and, and if you do read into the craze as well, a lot of it, like a lot of it. Obviously, some of it was dramatized, but a lot of it did actually happen, which just blows your mind that that stuff goes on in real life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're still finding bodies from the craze, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It's mental. Like, they really, really did affect London. It's. But like the film said, they were, they were celebrities. People loved them. If you're on the right side of them, they were brilliant you could and they showed that really well i think that they this, did. again the duality of just them as a family as well within their local community if it was if you're in their local community they were brilliant they were lovely people if you weren't in that little circle of knowing them that way don't even bother yeah literally yeah as that yeah. one guy found out <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, indeed, and we'll be talking about a close friend of theirs very shortly. But um, yeah, mm. very shortly. Yeah, so that was our number three. Your number two, uh, Bronson. Oh, oh, there we go. Close, close, but sadly, got to call that a pun. Mm -hmm. Got to call that a pun. Got to call that a pun. So it's over to me now, is it, AJ? Indeed, indeed it is, sir. Okay. I'll move you over. Oh, Thank sorry, you. we got. To... Please do. You did it? Am I doing well, it? Matt, no, you do it. Go for it. Matt, oh, this is the one that uh, you said was an honorable, and I think it's one of the best things he's ever done. Lock. Oh. Now, we talk about we talk about what he can do behind a mask. We talk about the fact that he can have presence with just his eyes, the fact that he can be a great villain, the fact that he can be handsome George the gay dancer. <laughs> but let's also, the and the fact that he twins. can get into shape. The fact that he can do all of these things, the fact that he can learn mixed martial arts in like six mm. months and still be convincing, and he could throw. But to show the range of emotional vulnerability that he did while driving a freaking car, <laughs> being on a cell phone, not interacting with another human. And making you feel like you are literally a passenger in the backseat and it may as well be driving Miss Daisy. Oh my God, what he did with this role. So good. So, so it, good. The only, well, the, only thing, the only reason why I didn't make my top 10 is I did feel like the pace was quite slow. Um, and that's just my personal preference. Uh, but his, his acting in this is just second to none. So good. Yeah. So so good. If you want to see an actor act, watch this film. Literally. So I um saw it today. Saw it today. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um I will what agree you with you a bit on the pacing. Five minutes. What was your Are initial you? thought at first? What were your initial thoughts at first? So it's funny because I kind of knew what was coming because Nick had brought oh. it up in a previous film, um, previous episode. I think it was film set in one location or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of yeah. knew it was just him. But it's always interesting to see how someone handles this. And it, it starts, it's funny how it starts quite chirpy because you get all these different phone calls. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it. And you think, oh, I'm not deadbeat dad, but you can see it like you, you wonder if that's where it's going. Then you get something mm -hmm. else. Then it's that. Then the phone call comes from the mistress, well, not even the mistress, from the one night stand. Yeah. And from there, the spiral and it's the range of emotions of a man having to confess to his wife still trying to be a good dad to his kids who want to hear the the, the football you want to watch the football with him but now it's over the radio and daddy you listening and what have you then it's the work side of life from a man who knows something but slight little mistakes is the part that really got to me is while he's on this mission and he's dead certain where to find the folder and then he sees it in the, the, in the seat next to him you're like oh crap 
you can't turn back even though you really want to turn back like that and it just and from there it's all these different conversations and as you said it's it's weird the different range of emotions you get based on the relation of who you're talking to and it mm. it's also really true to life <laughs> it, it's weird how this can happen but i i will say it like sometimes i can picture it like i've had phone calls where i could be really chirpy with one person by the next phone call i'm really down but also sometimes yep. on the group chat, especially for us, because there are two group chats predominantly in my world, and it's the Ministry of Wrestling group chat, and it's yep. the what well, it's the film group chat, but it's the the comic book movie. That's the title of it. In oh. one of them, Nick and I can be completely beefing, and then we are a tag team on the other one, and they can be concurrent at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's no. that, and that's yeah. what you find. It kind of reminded me on, on this the the different shades of personality you can get from someone just based off of a two-minute difference in a phone call. I, yep. I was really impressed by it. I will agree the pacing was a tad out there for me, but I was really impressed by what's done. I'll add this for the pacing as the one thing before we move on. I mm -hmm. actually think the pacing was quite intentional. I think it was a device to really, because you wanted it to progress because you wanted to find out what happens next, but now kind of, okay, getting a little bit arty-farty here, but indulge me. If you imagine that sometimes movies just have poor pacing, you know, The Fall Guy, for instance, which you've spoken about already, fun movie, kind of poorly paced in some parts. It could have they could have chopped it by 15, 20 minutes and you would have had the same movie with this. I actually think the slow pacing was quite intentional. I believe that they did it. For the exact purpose of you wanting to move along right. because think of it just well like when you get into trouble with your relationship it's not resolved then and there it doesn't get resolved no. instantly it's a yeah. slow laborious process right. and i think it was a tactical decision to mirror the slow burn of a relationship falling but apart here's the other part as much as i think the pacing was a bit of a killer right oh sorry I don't have... yeah as much as i thought the pacing was a killer this film is either a short movie or it's on this pace. And I think one of the smart things that made this film a tad meta was it's London to Birmingham. You can't oh, do it in shorter than an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so if you really took that point about that, so he is off, you know, like where it ends and you're like, he's just stopped off and he starts again. You're like, maybe that would have been the length of it. So they've taken the distance and been like, well, this can work. Because if it was like from, you know, Fulham to Forest Hill. Paddington oh, to Lancaster movie. Gate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, yeah, I screwed up. Okay, right, I'm at the hospital. No, no, no. See ya. A it's a YouTube short. It's a <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Sorry, screwed her. Out. Bye. We've got to go. She's in labour. Like, no. It, you, you've got a decent length of it, and it, it worked out that by the time you've done this journey, you're like, hmm, that's, yeah, he would be there. So it's weird how it works in its way. Like, it mm. does drag, but it's 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 a realistic drag. I remember, I remember when I watched this with my girlfriend, and we both said that. Do you not reckon this could do really well as a one one man play? Oh, hundred percent. Feel to 100%. it. You know, like, you know, like when you watch um, Birdman, and you're like, like that you're could easily film. be like a stage show or a play sort of thing. The way it's kind of shot, this I thought think I thought exactly the same. Like they could easily have this as. A play, maybe you can have a couple of flashbacks and stuff, but it kind of had that feel to it for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. It, it's an amazing there. film. And considering, okay, so you want to talk unoriginal, I would actually say that <laughs> theater is far more unoriginal at the moment than film is, given that it just wants to seem to adapt every single popular movie into a theater production. Mm. Um, it has some original stuff, don't get me wrong. Look at all the theatre people now going, Bah, how dare you? Calm down. Um, so good. Uh, I tried to buy a ticket to um, Book of Mormon yesterday on the fly. Now that's a show. Oh, oh that's so good. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Very good. I, I still want to go see Mrs. Doubtfire. I know you're just talking awesome. about <laughs> Awesome. I loved it. I didn't think I would. I loved it. I I'm going to go it. watch it just because, well, obviously, you know, my love for Robin. So I need to go see it. Um, a Robin production sans Robin. I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, I, You know what? I thought it would be weird. There's one scene I didn't agree with. It was when they found out that Mrs. Doubtfire was their dad. Obviously, because of the new generation, they, they've tamed it down. But apart from that... Uh, but tamed I, it down? I, he's having a pee in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, no, no. He's not allowed to do that anymore because it would be like he's exposed. So it's like the cost... Spoiler. 
the costume started to fall apart and what have you. So they've opened the door and caught him with like the costume peeling or something. I can't remember what it was, but I was so let down by it. So I mean, they could have still done that and not shown anything. Yeah, you don't see anything in the film. Exactly. So exactly. You just see the stream. Don't cross streams. Yeah. Um, but did they did they make any comments about Robin in the stage show? Did they any homages to him or anything? No, sadly, which is yeah, that is, that was a bit sad. Like they didn't. They didn't. Yeah, you but thought that had something. I, I really like the stage actor who was playing the role. Um, yeah, apparently he, he is really, really good. Well. Yeah, he done really well. Um, it it would have been nice to give a nod. They could have given some form of a nod. Mm. I do agree with that. But no, great play, great musical. Sorry, my, my uncle's just sent me a really funny meme. <laughs> Stallone. I'm making a movie about composers. Oh, I've I, heard this one. Yeah. I'm playing Beethoven. Van Damme, I'll be Mozart. <laughs> Schwarzenegger, stop it, guys. I'm not saying it. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. I, the amount of times I'm going to send it in the group chat, but I always see it. Oh, like, it's so oh, funny. Yeah. It's so funny. I literally had my daughter kicking me in the chest, in the chin this morning, and I had to look at her and go, put the daddy down. <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me and went, get to the chopper. I was like, oh, I've taught her well. <laughs> well played. Well played. Oh, girl two and a half, and she's quoting Predator to me. Go on, lass. Uh, where were we? Sorry, made it tangent. That was luck, wasn't it? Yeah. Lock, which is our number two. So, Matt, your number one, please, sir. Stuart, a life backwards. What is this? I heard, it. heard it. I, I, well, I oh. saw the list of the films that he's got, but I was like, "What? I never I heard do not it. know this." So, I see Bendy Dick. Come on, my Baps is there too. Yeah, and again, those two together on screen mm. are just are just phenomenal. Um, it's based in Cambridge. Um, so he plays a homeless a guy called Stuart Shorter. And basically, Ben Cumberbatch's character is got writer's block. And he's trying to like mm. think of a new idea for a book. And he comes across this guy. And then for some reason, he just kind of is like, I want to know more about this guy. And then basically writes his story, but writes it backwards. Hence, mm. Stuart Life Backwards. And those two together on screen are just amazing like it's so so well acted and again it's one of these films where people was always like oh yeah tom hardy oh, i'm i'm i I'm, uh, never you mentioned this film they're like i've never heard that before I'm like ha, yeah. one up on you um hardy a, hipster yeah 2007 it came out and um i i i want everyone to watch this film it's just so good it's just it the, the ending is sad you will cry, I'm telling you now, but it is worth it. It's just you like crying in movies, Matt. I I, lo I love crying. Yeah, why not? I love a bit of watch crying. Watch a film called Grave of the Fireflies. Oh, that is on one of my lists actually to watch. I have, yeah, I do need to watch. I think you've mentioned it before on the show. And I've Grave gone, of oh, the Fireflies <laughs> and the Green Mile. Every single yeah. time those movies will break me. Green Mile has not made me cry. Grave of didn't, but Grave. Oh my God, does it tug? Grave, oh it's God. hard. But again, this 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 guy that he plays is um, going through a mental health journey as well, and um, he just—I don't know why how he can tap into that. I mean, I know he had quite a lot of those issues when he was younger, so maybe he ta he tapped into that. But the performance, when you watch it, you you forget that you're watching a film, I and mean, it's like you think you're watching a documentary. Like he's just—I can't tell you how good he is in it. Like he is mm. amazing. This um, is one of his early roles, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like probably uh, maybe a second, yeah. second. Like, he looks proper young. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he'd done other stuff before this as well. So there's like, um, but it was all like kind of straight to DVD sort of thing. It's so like Minotaur and The Deserter, those two mm. films. Um, Deserter is quite a funny one because, again, I remember being a HMV and it came in. Um, what film? I think Bronson had just come out actually, and all of a sudden we got these DVDs with Tom Hardy in. We're all like, what, "What's this?" I had his picture on the front of all these DVDs. So he just assumed he'd be like the main character, and like Deserter, he's in it for like ten minutes. I remember watching it and was like, uh, "Where is he?" 
Because again, obviously I bought, <laughs> I bought it because one, I got a discount, and two, because I had Tom Hardy in. So I was like, I'll give it a go. Shocking. Don't bother. Um, <laughs> but it's, again, this one, I remember seeing this, and I was like, oh, all filmed in Cambridge. A lot of locations, especially if you like live in Cambridge, like, oh, I know that bit. I know where that is. Oh, yeah, I've been down there. And then I remember not long after watching it, and then being like with uh, in town with my girlfriend, oh, Tom Hardy was standing just there. I might go stand there and just breathe a bit of the uh, Tom air in. Because <laughs> I'm a tad <laughs> like that. But yeah, I highly <laughs> recommend everyone to watch it. Like, everyone should watch this film. It's so good. I think I've just Googled. I'm not sure if it's the same one. It looks like it could actually be on YouTube. Yes, I think it uh, is actually. I'll, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Surely it'll be on AJ Vision. Oh, sure. I'm gonna... Everything is on AJ Vision. It's the best <laughs> platform in the world. <laughs> there are some stuff I'm still um, missing, but yeah. Uh, you have I'm to go missing, deeper like... into the AJ Vision archive, brother. You'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Hour yeah. and a half oh, no. movie. Is that about right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I will give it a search, but definitely AJ Vision failing that. And it's all true oh. story as well. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice, nice. Good old biopics. Good mm, old right biopics. Now. You're dealing with our number one, right, AJ? I am. I am. But I feel yalla, like yalla, yalla. I think we're all entitled to, to give a good part on this. Uh-huh. Yes, we are talking about Ronnie and Reggie's good old friend and another slightly unhinged individual. <laughs> <laughs> good old Bronson. Now, this film. Woo! This film. Um, I remember the opening to it. I wasn't too sure what to expect because mm. you're seeing him presenting to a to an audience on the stage, and you're like, I, was like, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this. And then the story unfolds, the journey of Charles Bronson unfolds, and I was like, wow. And the more the film progresses, the more you're encapsulated by it, and the more you appreciate Tom Hardy for what he is doing in mm-hmm. this film. I was just like, this is nuts you know and it it the, kind of like the way we could talk about how the the craze were legends and you know that that superstar celebrity part it's the other side of Charles Bronson this man who loves art who who could be oh. harmless at some point but within the flick of a switch you have got the biggest psychopath in your hands and you're like what is going on and it's when he's unhinged and he's in mad mode but still like singing and doing stuff he's like no no like when he gets that prison guard in that cell situation me and Rob <laughs> quote that probably too many times rub it rub it rub it <laughs> <laughs> not there not there <laughs> it's, a, it's just so good there's so again, many scenes in it that are quite all of this all of this <laughs> Like, we've got the hipster <laughs> and then the oh, ultra broken. hipster on this because, Matt, mm. you saw this in the cinema. Please yeah, give us yeah, yeah. A, a detail of this experience. Yeah, oh, it was, I was with Rob when, actually, when I saw it, actually. Shout out to Rob. Oh, God. Weekend. Shout out to Rob. Um, yeah, again, I saw, I saw it advertised. I knew who Charles Bronson was, so I was quite intrigued to see, like, his life story, basically. I mean, I didn't know he was an artist when I got into that film. When I came out of it, I was like, oh, my God, I didn't realise all these weird different layers to this this guy and um he just did it so well like the scene i mean the scene that come, jumps to my head straight away is one where he's um take giving the guy a cup of tea and the way he just kind of clenches his hands and the way he does that i was just like oh, that's so good and then the bit on the stage where he's got the two face yeah. ah that was the part i wanted to mention yeah yeah but it's just yeah. The so self, good. the self narrative autobiographical yeah. moments where he's enacting different people. Oh, yeah, unreal. And again, his voice just switches. No, no, like, no. come on! It's yeah. like, oh, dude, he's chilling. And again, the, the music in this film as well is spectacular. The score, soundtrack is so good. And uh, we put it as one of our Sunday uh, soundtracks not that long ago. Um, the music just fits perfectly with it. Like the the dance, the, where, they're, where they're all dancing in the gym, and he's just like hobbling over to that guy, and he's just drooling because he's on so many drugs. Yeah, I was like, catatonic I state. Yeah. You're like, 
what this shouldn't be funny, but it really is yeah. in a film that is obviously primarily about someone that you shouldn't really be laughing about. Like, you know, he's a violent guy, but there's so many aspects, there's so many parts in that film that actually was like, this is actually quite funny as well. Like, they mm. just the way they managed that was so, so very well done. It was, they almost deified him, didn't they? There was mm. certainly an uptake in interest for Charles Bronson after oh, this. Yeah, you know, there was, yeah. Louis, Louis Theroux, I think, has that series on Netflix, doesn't he? Is it not Louis Theroux? But there's another, it's not Louis Theroux. Sorry, I'm misquoting that. But there's I a really, really. Louis and Charles Bronson. No, listen, it's the guy's good. Like, he's got some. I think there's only two seasons and each season's only like okay. six episodes. He's a Kiwi guy, a Kiwi journalist, yep. and he just goes and explores these really quite morbid, sordid things. And mm -hmm. anyway, he's exploring voodoo in England of all places. And the people who are having this kind of voodoo cult actually yeah. were mates with Charles Bronson. And he, the guy, unbeknownst to him, ends up on the bloody telephone with no. Charles Bronson. Yeah! And they've got it on loudspeaker and everything. Oh, right, how are you doing, son? And it's like, <laughs> how did he manage yeah. that? I remember watching the uh, like uh, behind the scenes again. I bought the DVD when I was work uh, when I was working at HMV, and they did the like behind the scenes special features bit. And they obviously do a big long interview with Tom Hardy, and he was saying how difficult it was just to be able to speak to the guy in yeah. prison. Uh, yeah. And he managed to speak to him on the phone, and then he talked about how he went and visited him in jail. Yeah. And he said he had it booked out for like half an hour or something. Apparently, Charles Bronson was like, "Nah, you're too, you're too small. You you can't play me. You you're not too you're too small to play me." <laughs> so he goes, "Right, okay." He goes, "If you can put some put some muscle on, come back and we'll talk about it." So then Tom had to go back. I think he said he spent like three four weeks putting on loads of muscle and stuff. They went back in, and Charles was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you'll do." It's just it's amazing. The guy is just, I don't the know. The prisoner like, dictated to the actor, yeah. you will go full method for this. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Who, who already is a full full method kind of actor anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the stories, the stories he's got of talking to him, again, there's, there's, um, it must be on YouTube somewhere, but he, he talks about, and he does the voice, and he's like, talking about how Charles was saying to him, oh, you know, like, you know, you need to do this, this, and this if you want to play me. If you don't do this and this and this, it's not going to work. And he was like, yeah, of course, yeah, we'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently it came like pen pals as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's just a fascinating man, isn't he? And mm. The fact that Tom Hardy, I mean, I've never met Charlie Bronson, but I think it's pretty much a general consensus is that he captured him perfectly. Yeah. Just Tom well, Hardy. When you man. listen to half of the things that Matt was just saying there, that where Charles is like, you can't do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do this. For it to have got to a release point, I think the man's pretty comfortable with what's been released and how he's been portrayed. So mm. right. Yeah, that 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 that's that's great. And I must admit, we're at three different stages of Bronson in the fact that Matt, you saw it in the cinema, Nico, you saw it. I remember seeing the posters, but never quite sure. I was like, what what, what is this? I always what remember it and I was like I'm intrigued, but it wasn't something on the radar. Never saw it, you know, knew there was a cinema release or what have you. Forgot about it. And it's when we done our previous Tom Hardy episode, and I saw it, I was like, this is this is such a yeah, such a journey. And good and again, um, the, po the poster's really good as well. Like, I know it sounds stupid to say, but it's so eye catching, you're like, what what's that? I I'm intrigued. I want to know what that's about. I mean, yeah. the poster for Scary Movie was intriguing too, so I don't always go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. All right, guys, how do we compile this then? I think, well, the easy way to do it is what crossovers did we have? What did we have to punt? So, legend. Lawless, Venom, Mad Max Fury Road, Legend, Bronson. I think those are the five commonalities. Yeah. Oh, and Warrior. Warrior was common as well. Oh, yeah. So Bronson, Warrior, Lawless, Led Jesus. Bronson Can we agree fun. Venom shouldn't be in this discussion? It's a bit yeah. of fun, but it shouldn't be in the pantheon yeah, yeah. of great well, I'm movies. more like Lawless, you both had. Yep. I mean, yeah. How many? I think you've got to put Warrior in there. For me, Warrior... Ah, it's so hard. Because you could make an argument that, for I, any I, of them. It's kind of hard to take out either 
Um, legend but then how do you take out Legend Bronson and... You've oh, got to Jesus. have Bronson in, surely. You have to have yeah, Bronson, Bronson in. Like, let's yeah. not be silly. Bronson has yeah. to go in there. Oh, uh, God. All right. So what are we saying now? In there. Oh, this is not Was it too similar to Bronson? Oh. Which one? Lawless? Legend. So what yeah, are we find similar, that? but... We've got Legend... Because War is in. It's Legend. We said Venom's not in. What did you say was in, AJ? At the moment, I've only got Bronson in. I thought we had Lawless, Warrior, and Bronson. Look at you making decisions without the rest of us. No, I'm, I'm literally <laughs> listening. I, like, I literally I've said Lawless. Yeah, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to have those three in. <laughs> we did acknowledge you earlier. so I, I do yeah. think Warrior does need to be in there with Bronson. Lawless, yeah, that's what I heard you say that. Like, yeah, Lawless, I don't know because it. Okay, it, so it's right not a no, but it's I'm not sure. But Bronson and Warrior for sure. Mm -hmm. God. And then what we're tossing up between Lawless, Legend, Mad Max, Fury Road. We get. I guess we can take oh. Fury Road out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lawless and Legend, and what else? What am I missing? Or is that it? But well, that's it, yeah. Sure, that'd be that's it. Bronson yeah, Warrior it. Lawless Legend. Oh, Lawless is gonna get destroyed. <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy to swap Lawless for Don Kirk if you wanted. Would that fall under? I mean, to me, it's I'm trying to think how it falls in a Tom Hardy movie realm, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. Ignore me. I'm stupid. Lawless out for lock. Yes, but how many people realistically have seen Locke? Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Could we go for one of the box office and put either a Venom or a Mad Max in there? No, because then the stupid people will vote for Mad Max Fury Road. It's a deleted movie. We know this. Especially as the new one's coming out as well. It's refreshing their mind. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. I, I can't suffer a world where people are going to say Mad Max Fury Road is better than Bronson Warrior. It, yeah, maybe Legend that I would listen to, but it's still I'd struggle. Which one? Maybe Legend, because the thing about Legend, right, is that Hardy is incredible in it, but the movie's meh, meh. Yeah. He's amazing in yeah. a meh movie. Yep, yeah. that's why I'm kind of toying with the idea of taking Legend out. But he's so good in it, and with uh, guys, make a decision. I can't decide things tonight. I think that should. I reckon we should keep Legend in. Have Legend, okay. Lawless, Warrior, and Bronson. I think. Look, something's going to lose, and so we're either going to put something overly in there. It's either, look, you're going to be in unknown territory or over popular and going to win and outdo the rest. So it's, yeah. it, there's there's no winner in what we pick. Leave it as it is. There's no major blockbusters in here, I guess, which I'm kind of happy about. These are all kind mm. of dub double A or a bit art house or a bit less popular. I think, yeah, I'm happy with that. And I'm not talking about legend when I say art house, funny flubbers. I'm talking about Bronson. Calm yourselves. Because, um, <laughs> bro, you can feel the key on the keyboard of people going, eh, calm down. Yeah. Yep. All right, AJ, lock it in. Okay, we're good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, the official movie, Mount Rushmore, in the voice of Venom. Actually, let's do that. Let's yeah. What the movies are in no particular order. Lawless. Our second entry is... Legend. Our third entry is... Bronson. The final entry into the movie Man Rushmore of Tom Hardy movies. Is it Eddie or not? Is... It's not. It's, it's not. Warrior. Come Let's out see. to play. Yeah, I'm happy good. with that. That's a good, good list. That's, that's a good, good list. Four. That's a, that is a good that's one. A good four. That is yeah. a very good four. Showcases the man's talent and what a man he is. 
And we talked about that band today because of Matt. Matt, this side from the Bigger Movie Pod. Matt, where can people find you and what are you up to with the Bigger Movie Pod at the moment? And what can we expect? We are on Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, formerly known as X, uh, Facebook as well. Um, (laughs) We are having a little break at the moment just to um, look after our mental health um, with the rest of the group. Um, which is very important, and everyone should do that. We'll be back very soon, though. Um, we've got some more guests coming up. We're actually quite near the end, I bet. It's taking us a very long time to get to it, um, due to some breaks and Christmas and New Year and all that sort of stuff. But we will get there, and then we'll have, obviously, our award show at the end, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, but, yeah, keep an eye out for it. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be out in your ear holes very soon. Cool. Lovely stuff. Um, small announcement on my part too. Uh, my second child is going to be born. I mean, literally any moment. Um, I will do a separate video about this and pin it to the top of the channel. I'm going to do my best over the course of the next four to five weeks to put some content out, but don't be looking for daily movie content in classic reviews and long top 10 shows guys i'm afraid family comes first also my wife will kill me um so even if i wanted to i wouldn't be allowed to i'm not even going <laughs> to pretend otherwise so yeah for maybe five weeks we're going to take it definitely on the pod there's going to be a hiatus you may see a bit of content here and there but for most part the channel's going to go relatively quiet other than the odd review that goes up um but yeah, bear with. We are coming back. It's just I have to provide daddy time and somehow sleep in between. And these lengthy podcasts do not help. So bear with us. And when we return, it will be, I don't know, the top 10 movie sons. Because <laughs> yes, I'm having a little boy. Actually, that's a fun topic. No, I believe when we return, we're going to have uh, Big Picture Film Club joining us to talk oh, about awesome. eight. Yeah, to talk about A24 movies. It should be cool. Um, but yeah. Stay tuned, guys. Keep in touch. Bear with us. We will return very soon. AJ, would you like to take us home? So, look, in in the element of taking us, everyone home, you've heard it from both gentlemen above. Take a mental health break. Take some time to reconnect with your family. As much as we appreciate you guys, take some time to focus on yourselves. But with that being said, do be sure to go over to both Spotify, whether it's Bigger Movie Pod or whether it's Silver Screen Dudes. Check us all out. Find us on all our social networks. Tell a friend to tell a friend because without you guys, there is none of this at all, no matter which channel you're talking about. Do be sure to vote. Hope you enjoyed the episode. More than anything, do click like, like and subscribe. Do be sure to comment below because it just lets us know which way we're going. And please, Bigger Movie Pod, Check them out, guys. Check them out because, yeah, without them, there's no us as well. It's it's all part of the, f- the film familia as it is. So I just thank you very much once again. Yeah. And yeah. Thank you, thank you for having me. There's a bit of a break. No, absolute pleasure. Always a pleasure. So on both sides, Matt. there is a bit of a break. And we will just see you on the other side, whenever that may Definitely. be. So until the next time, I am the one, AJ Anthony Jordan. I'm Nico Luro, back in four to five weeks, guys. Wish me luck. Second kid on the way. Matt, thank you for joining us. You are always welcome back, my man. Thank you very much for having me. Ta-ta. See you, guys. (laughs) Bye-bye.